Okay. So from now on, whenever we are asked the question, is it ionic or covalent, we're going to pull out the electronegativity table and remember this relationship and uh, calculate it directly. Okay, so we said sometimes covalent bonds can be single, double, or triple bonds. And we got to remember how many electrons are in a single bond. Okay, so we had a single bond um, between, like, carbon and hydrogen, all right? So carbon and hydrogen have a single bond. Um, that has two electrons in it. On the other hand, we saw another example where carbon was with oxygen, and it had what we said was a double bond, which you could draw as two lines or as dots. Either way is fine with me. So in both cases, um, the one here and the one here, these both have four electrons in the double bond. And so a triple bond, a triple bond would be something like, um, say, carbon connected to a nitrogen. And uh, like this complex here, which is called cyanide. Some of you might have heard of that before. It's a poison. So cyanide has a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen in it. And you could draw it as three lines, or if you, if you wanted to, you could actually draw it as six electrons. So that's six electrons. So each type, each bond has two electrons in it. Uh, but when I, when I have a double, double that is four and triple that is six. Okay, so like in hydrogen, H2, this molecule H2, this little subscript 2 means I have two different hydrogen atoms, so I'm going to write two different ones. Each one of them, actually let's make them two different colors. Each one of them has, has one electron that is going to be involved in forming the bond. So if that's true, then the black hydrogen has one electron and the red hydrogen has one, and they come together to form a single bond. Okay, and then we look at oxygen. So let's make oxygen green and blue. No particular reason, just because. So I choose six electrons here because it's in the 16th group. Okay, and then we have our other one. Like that. Okay, so I can see that there's two electrons that are going to want to pair up there and two that want to pair up here. So if I wanted to draw this as a neat structure, as something a little more organized, then I would want to put, I'm going to replace my oxygen here first. I would want to put two lines showing those four electrons in the middle because it's a covalent bond, so they're shared. And so that's what a double bond looks like. For nitrogen, let's do orange and purple. So one of the nitrogens has five valence electrons, and the other one has five as well. So, so now I can see that in both cases they have they have like three missing spaces. So if they sort of connect their bonds in those three spaces, suddenly they'll be stable. Okay, so if like I wanted to write that as a neat structure. Um, we would do nitrogen with three, well, actually those bonds are shared, so they don't really belong to the orange one. They're, they belong to both of them, so we're going to draw it as a black line. And then the, the nitrogen, the orange nitrogen, still has two of its own electrons that it's not sharing. So our structure would look something like that. So these multiple bonds, the double and triple, come because... By sharing electrons, um, it allows the, all of the atoms to get their stable conf configuration. So here, uh, in our oxygen here, we have 2, 4, 6, and 8, all of them around this one oxygen, okay? Uh, and this, the uh, blue oxygen, has the, the 4 from the double bond plus 2 here and 2 here, so that's, that's 8 as well. So both of the atoms have their octet. In this case, you've got six in the bond and two in the nitrogen. Um, let's color code that. So I've got s six, 
six bonding electrons here and two non-bonding electrons for a total of eight. And on the other hand, we, we are still sharing those electrons with the other nitrogen, so it has six bonding and two non-bonding, so they both end up with eight electrons. That's what we said, it was stable. So, on the back of your periodic table is a big list of all the polyatomic um, groups that we're going to be using in this class. There's a few more that aren't shown on there, but most of them are there. The list starts with ammonium, which is listed as NH4. All of these things are covalent bonds, all of them. Even though some of them have metals in them, the electronegativity difference is too small to be a ionic compound. So everything on that list is, is covalent. All of them are also charged. Some of them are positively charged, like ammonium, and some of them are negatively charged. Those charges are distributed throughout the molecule. They don't belong on one particular atom most of the time. Um, all of them have funny names, which are all listed on the back of the periodic table. And the thing to remember about these groups is they stay together. They are covalently connected to each other. Covalent bonds are really strong. However, because they have a charge, they can react with something else. So let's take the example of NH4+. Plus. If NH4 is, is sort of sitting around doing nothing and a Cl- minus happens to come along, these two things are going to react together because they have a positive and a negative charge. They'll form a compound like this. To name this compound, I just I look at the name of this group, this special group. It's called ammonia, or sorry, ammonium. And then this is just the element, chlorine, and when it's part of, of a complex, we change the ending of that so it becomes IDE. So there's ammonium, and then chlorine becomes chloride. And that's this, the name of this complex. If I were to react something with this, the NH4 group stays together. I can't break those N ends away from the H. So that's what a polyatomic group is. The last kind of bond we have is not very interesting, actually, but it's very, very useful for us. It's called a metal bond. And this is a little bit like J.J. Thompson's raisin in the pudding model, because, but instead of having positive charges that were like little raisins, instead we've got actually like little negative charges that are like little raisins. And so the nuclei of this complex um, are stuck in a particular position. They're like arranged in a geometric way. So in this case, they're arranged as a square. Um, the electrons, though, are kind of allowed to hop around to various atoms without really very much effort. Um, that's why metals are really good at conducting electricity because you have the sea of negative electrons. Okay, and so when you run a current through it, all these electrons are going to go towards the positive side and away from the negative side, and that allows you to conduct electricity. And that's why metals can do that because metals have metal bonds. Nonmetals don't do that. Nonmetals hang on to their electrons much more tightly so they don't form these like sea of electron thing. Um, all right, so that, that wraps us up for this chapter. The next set of notes is going to be about naming chemicals. Remember to go in and do your questions in top hats so you get credit for the lecture.